Hi, this is The Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about the employee versus the entrepreneur. Okay, so back in like, like it was like 2002, like back way before I ever thought about starting a company, uh, I was working for this tiny little company uh, which I really didn't like uh, and I took a day off and I went to a, like a trade show in London and it was like a like a software development show. They used to have them all the time. It was at the Excel Center in London. And I went down there and I was walking around getting the goodie bags and all that kind of stuff. And in the next, the, the next big hall over, there was another show for small businesses. And I was, I was curious. I'd seen everything in the, in the one hall. So I went over and site, you know, registered for the small business one and I went in there. And you had to put like your, your business name and of course I didn't have one so I put Ruli Information Systems, because I thought that sounded really cool. I thought, man, if I ever have a company, I'm going to call it Ruli Information Systems, right? So obviously, you know, I went with Overpass. But so, and I walked in there, I'm walking around, everyone's trying to sell you something, and I'm trying to look like, yeah, yes, I have this company. Yeah, yeah, it's really everybody, yeah, it's really big. We're into website, website design or whatever, uh, you know, getting, you know, all this stuff. And, and then there was like a, you know, a few auditoriums, and I went and sat in this auditorium where there was a, like a, like a talk or a, like an interview given with a, a Sahir, Sahar Hashemi, who is like one of the, one of the founders of Co Coffee Republic, which is one of the big uh, chains here in the UK, uh, coffee chains you know, like, like Starbucks. So here's, here's a book here. So her and her, her brother Bobby started it up in the 90s. Uh, and it was really interesting because she was talking about, you know, uh, getting started, getting funding, doing business plans, all this kind of stuff, you know, finding a location, setting up. And then she talked about, you know, once they set up, you know, they weren't getting the traffic that they would. So they were praying for people to come in and going out every day with samples and trying to get people to come in. Even though they had foot traffic outside, people just weren't walking in. And it was, it was really, I mean, it was really interesting. And I'm just, you know, I was sitting in, I was sitting in this auditorium mainly because my feet were tired, but it was, it was interesting to, to, you know, the stories of, of struggle and then successes and things started to catch on and everything like that. And then there was a question, uh, like a question session afterwards and somebody stood up and he asked, um, this, yes, I just want to ask, uh, back in those early days, did you ever think to hire a marketing consultant to help you with the, uh, with, to, with all of that? And obviously this guy was a marketing consultant and, and like, it was funny because her whole demeanor changed. She, was, she almost almost got defensive. She was like, "Sorry, a, a marketing consultant? It, and w why would we do that? You know, what would that have done for us? We had no money. What would what would a marketing consultant have done for us?" And he was kind of like, "Oh, oh they would have given you an unbiased view of whatever." And he would give this spiel, and he was kind of like stumbling back. And it was it was so hysterical. I mean, nobody was laughing. Everyone was kind of like embarrassed for the guy. But you know, I wish somebody had filmed it and put it on YouTube or whatever, because it was like. Because back then I wasn't ever thinking about doing a business. I was ever thought I was like smart enough to have a business. So, but it was a, like you could see, you know, in one room, like in one shot, the difference between an employee, somebody who was trying, you know, you know, we could sell to businesses, a business to business, you know, salesperson, and then you saw an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur with stories of struggle and hardship and success, and she was going, "Why would we need that? We don't, you know, we didn't have any money, because you know." And it was ultimately, you know, one of them was playing the game and one of them was trying to tell them they could do it better but would never have taken the risk and it was it was really really interesting and I know as an app developer you might experience this a lot too I know I definitely do like you 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 put everything into an app which you're selling you know business to consumer and just to you know you've got business to consumer you've got business to business and we kind of do both so we do you know most of our revenue comes from, from business to consumer so selling our app so that's great and it's much harder to do than business to business because business to consumer means I have to convince thousands or millions or you know even hundreds of people to download and buy buy my apps whereas you know with business to business I just have to convince one or two guys and then they take care of you know then they have to worry about the B to C side so it, you know it's it's different and but you know, when you're a, a software developer when you're an app developer and especially if your apps start to pick up a bit of traction you start to become the guy that all these people contact. So, you know, every day I get, you know, well, some days I don't get any, but some, some days I get two or three calls from, cold calls from people selling, you know, app marketing services or their software development services or advertising and stuff like that. And it's always like, it's, it's difficult because, you know, you're not talking to somebody who's actually, you know, taking the risk. So, you know, they're, they're very confident, like, oh yes, we can help you, you know. 
uh, you know, Eric, we, we can help you get your app to the top of the app store, blah, 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 blah. And you're thinking, yeah, you know, and I'm thinking, I can't afford to hire you anyway. And even then, you know, the only qualifications I seem to know about are the fact that you phoned me. And that question that you want to ask, that always too polite to ask, is if you're so good at, um, at advertising apps or marketing apps, you know, why don't you have an app on the app market? You know, why, you know, if you're so good at it, why don't you just do it, do one of your own, you know? Or like if they're selling advertising space, which I get a lot too, so, you know, if your ads are so good, why are you calling me? Why not, why don't you just put up an ad? You know, or a search engine optimization, you know, like, you know, dude, if, you're, if you're so good at search engine optimization, why aren't I just finding you in search results, you know? In fact, if I went into Google and typed in search engine optimization, wouldn't the first one that comes up be the best at that, just logically? You know, or, you know, or if they're really good at ASO and they do have apps, you say, like, can you show me numbers, you know, all this kind of stuff. And more often than not, they don't because they, you know, they have a job, they get paid regardless of whether or not you say yes or no. And you're in a very different situation because you're, 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 you're in the arena, you're playing the game, you know, it's, it's a win or lose for you and it's, you know, it's a job for them. And it's really, it's really difficult, and I, I, I try not to be cynical about it, but you, you start to see that, um, that change. And a lot of times, you know, especially when you're talking about, you know, when you, when you leave a job or, or you're doing it on the side and you still have a job and everybody has their criticisms about the fact that, you know, or they have advice how you could do it better, but they're not actually taking those risks. It's really easy to listen to them because everybody kind of sounds like they know what they're talking about. Somebody who's sitting in a job can be super confident because, you know, if you say yes or no, they don't lose that job necessarily. But if you take it on and you can't afford it and it fails, then you lose everything. And if you're, if nobody downloads your apps, you lose everything, all this kind of stuff. And you, you are in the arena and they're just sort of watching. And it, and there's, and, and part of it is like, there's always a job there to go back to. There's always a comfortable life to go back to, you know, there, and, you know, and, if you hire somebody, if you hire one of these services, you know, they could make your life easier. I mean, there's no, no question about it. You know, if I hire somebody to do my advertising for me, that would make my life easier. But if you don't have any money, you're not going to have an easy life anyway. You know, I talk about my team and, you know, some people say, maybe I need to set up a team too, but I didn't start off with a team. I started off with me. I started off with me and then, and then the apps. And then it was like, you know, doing everything myself, answering all the reviews, you know, emailing out, uh, trying to do, you know, all the app videos, doing all the app descriptions, all the app keyword research, everything like that. And eventually I started thinking, you know, the revenue started getting up and I could hire somebody to help. I could show them how to do this part and then they could take over that and I could start doing something else. And then if they, if they get sick or if they leave or whatever, then I have to jump back into that role. And that's just, that's just part of the game, you know? Uh, so don't let the, I mean, when these people call you up and you know, and you're thinking I'm starting off in the app business, you know, I, I'm not getting a lot of downloads or I'm not getting a lot of revenue or, or even if you are, but you're like here and you think you should be here, somebody else comes in over here and says, you know, and they look like they're here, but they're, you know, they're telling you they can bring you up to here. They don't know how to get up to there and they don't even know how to, how you got to there because they won't even take that risk. And uh, anyway, that's it for a rant. I hope that makes sense. You know, it just, there's a big difference between someone in the arena, an entrepreneur who's taking all those risks and somebody who just says they could take all your problems away and never trust. Yeah, you know, this is the thing. I did a video about this once years before called App Vultures. When you put yourself out there, you know, it's so tempting, you know, somebody so tempting when somebody calls you up and says, Hey, Eric, you know, the reason it's not working is because you haven't hired my service or, you know, or you haven't hired me to do this for you. Or, you know, um, somebody who calls up and prom you know, with a promise that I could take all your problems away, but you know, be very skeptical. And if you can't afford it, you just have to do it yourself. So anyway, that's it for today. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.